Hey guys, welcome to another video. So we are out visiting another cool place to show you guys. And we're actually at the Pearly Acres, which is a pig sanctuary. And it's all pot belly pigs that have been rescued from the animal agriculture. So we're gonna go in and check it out. and this is Sarah so we're gonna she, I'm gonna ask her a little bit about this place and she's gonna introduce herself and introduce all of her wonderful pigs um, and how many pigs do you have here there's 11 pigs 11 Wow yeah. Yeah. okay great so do you want to just tell us how this became how it started absolutely so um, so I'm Sarah and I, I'm the, the founder of uh, the Pearly Acre and um, basically all this began with having um, a one house pig as a pet and that's Mr. Bullet over here um, and uh, shortly after I moved here I began doing some very intentional uh, rescuing and adopting I knew that this was something I wanted to get into um, after meeting another sanctuary founder I, I didn't even realize that this was a thing that that people did um, and as soon as I became fully aware of the need for rescue and adoption um, over 90% of pigs, actually I think it's closer to 97% of pigs are rehomed within their, their first year. Wow. And there just needs to be some place for these, these pigs to go. Um, so I was led by passion and and um, and here we are, 11 pigs, 11 <laughs> pigs later. <laughs> um, nine of them are pot belly pigs, two of them are cooney cooney pigs, and those are two different uh, breeds of pigs. 
and um, they all live here together, just living their their best life. They're all sanctuary babes. All right, awesome. Okay, so these two at the front here. Okay. This is Quincy. Hi. Oh, hey. <laughs> um, he's about five or six, and this is Bullet, my first pig. Um, he turned four this year. Um, Cash uh, was my little guy for a long time, but he's not so little anymore. Um, and he will be three this year. Um, this is one of my Cooney Cooney pigs. This is Huey. That one's Georgie. There'll be two in July. Rosie is the oldest. Um, she's 10 years old. Oh, wow. Uh, Phoenix and Opal are sisters. They will be two in, in uh, September. Dexter is three as well. I, uh, Piper and Ivy, sisters. Oh. Um, they will also be, they also just turned three. And I think that's everybody, right? Did I do everyone? Oh, they have um, these little guys here uh, on their face. Yes. They're called waddles. Um, and they are specific to the Cooney breed. So you won't have waddles on a pig that's not a Cooney. Um, so yeah, so that's, and they got, they have the curly tails too. Everyone always wonders why these oh, guys Oh yeah, I didn't notice tails. that. Yep. Um, and they wag them just like a dog happiness. The Cooneys I've noticed don't wag, um, and I don't really know why. Um, Maybe because it's curled, their tail is kind of um, curled, right? They just don't, they just don't, this is not part of their yeah. personality. I don't know, but but yeah, so they've got the curly tails. Um, so the Pearly Acre is a, a non-for-profit sanctuary. Um, I uh, got that title just this past January, although I had been rescuing uh, for longer than that. Um, the Pearly Acre is uh, a vegan run sanctuary. I am vegan. Um, that's something that's very, very important to me. And I use tours to educate the public, to make them think about food a little differently um, because a lot of people don't you don't get to wake up in the morning and necessarily get to just think oh you know what am I gonna how can I connect with animals today um, so this is really what I like to to allow people to do I allow them into my home and into my heart um, to meet my pigs and and I and I think I think you're I'm not gonna get everybody for sure um, but if I can just lift those blinders a little bit um, that's good enough for me. So when it comes to the pigs specifically, these guys here, the Cooney Cooney pigs, uh, they are considered um, a, 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 a meat pig. They are a farmed pig. So these guys aren't typically commercialized like the, the types of pigs you would get if you went to the store and bought bacon or sausage. Uh, you would typically get oh, the... Sorry. <laughs> oh, so loud. So the Coonies would typically come from um, a farm to table type of situation. Um, so like they, they differ from your normal commercialized pigs in the sense that they do tend to get a little bit of a longer life if you consider two years to be lengthy, mm. whereas regular commercial pigs um, are, are slaughtered in you know six months to a year. Um, so these guys, when I adopted these guys, they were purchased from from the person I adopted them from right off the farm. Interesting. So, um, so, so yeah. what made them, sorry, can I ask, like yeah. what made them sell those to you? Like, or? It's the, the girl that I got them from? Yeah, I, she didn't sell them to me. Um, she had purchased these guys um, as pets off the farm. Oh. She wanted coonies. And the thing about the coonie coonies is that they're very difficult to get for adoption simply because um, to people they are a commodity. Right. So yeah. if, they, if there's money to be made off these pigs, they will make them. Um, so the girl that I adopted them from bought them from a farmer, which um, is something that I wouldn't do personally um, because I don't want to put the money into the farmer's pocket. However, two lives were saved. So if that's the way that you want to rescue, I am not judging anybody who does that. Um, but I just personally would not have paid for them. So um, she purchased them, brought them home, um, things changed in her life and she could not keep them and when i saw them up for adoption i got right in there <laughs> and those were like were they the next two right after um... uh so it was the two baby girls in september uh or august actually and then they came in november oh, okay so they were actually the last two adopted yeah yeah
So the first one that you got, you actually purchased just as a pet. So nothing to do, like, were you vegan at the time? No. or? So when I got Bullet, um, he was a bit of an accidental adoption. Um, I didn't know anything about the need for, for rescue. Um, he was posted on Kijiji from the family that had him. Uh, they have a little run in with um, the bylaw. So when it comes to having pigs, um, zoning is important to consider. Um, so he was about 13 weeks old. He was posted on Kijiji. I saw him, um, went and picked him up. We share a birthday, we're soulmates, <laughs> um, and brought him home. And that's really kind of what opened that door for me. I didn't know anything about this. Um, so, uh, and then the following couple pigs, so Ivy and Piper, who are <laughs> nowhere to be seen at this moment, um, are the only two that I currently have here that are not a rescue or an adoption. They came with me from my old house um, before I, I got into this. Um, and everybody else has their, has their rescue story. Um, Wow. Yeah. And I did read, I think that you would go hiking with Bullet. Is yeah. That right? Yes. <laughs> On a leash. So and... that's really how, how it really started. Um, when I would bring him places, I treated him just like a dog. I don't see how he should be treated any differently. Um, I brought him to the trails where I would walk and I put him on a leash and um, he would go, like I'd let go of the lead, he'd run just on his own. He stayed on the trails. Pigs don't have great eyesight. So I think they're so good on trails because they stick to kind of what they can see. And if they can see a trail, um, they tend to stay on it. So I think mm. that's why he does so well on, on trails. Uh, and so I'd bring him around. And of course, if you are going for a casual walk through the woods and you find a pig, uh, you're probably gonna talk to that person. So I found myself really educating people. And that's kind of what kind of lit that spark. You know, I thought, oh, you know, there's, there really is this disconnect. And I was not um, vegan at the time. I was not eating pig. That was a decision that I made as a child for no reason whatsoever. Oh. I honestly have no idea why I did that. I'm glad that it's I did. It's a premonition of your future goals. I, I guess so. <laughs> so when I got him, that was no problem. Um, shortly after, I went uh, vegetarian and then went through the slow process of eliminating um, until I went vegan about two years ago. So Wow. So you already had some of these other pigs by then. Yes. Right. So when I moved here in January 2019, I don't think I was fully, fully vegan. I was almost there. Um, and it was just like a matter of cheese. Like right. most people. The last thing. The ch cheese is the tough thing. <laughs> um, but I had at least seven of the pigs. And then, and then, um, and then four of them came last summer. So they haven't even been here uh, really a full year. So. Wow. Yeah. Like that's amazing. Especially because you said you just got designated as a sanctuary. Yep. Yep. So that's a big deal. Yep. Like that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So what I like to say is basically, I was doing all the tough stuff already you know i was taking the rescues and facilitating rescues with with other people um and, and paying for everything yourself right you're not getting any help from anywhere and like completely out of pocket so i did have to make sh some changes along the way that that helped me financially um and i always believed that i was not going to have more pigs than i could pay for myself because um it's tough asking for money. I don't even really do it now. That's why I do tours and I have t-shirts because for me personally, it's just easier for me to um, give you an experience right. and use that money for my pigs. So, um, so starting the tours, when I started the tours last summer, that was the first time I was getting contribution from other people other than wow. you know, my income. So um, I had to do certain things like, um, Along the way, I had to change their feed um, because the pellets were just too expensive. Um, so I did have to um, make some changes there. Um, but actually, when uh, when I made that change for food, um, that was what kind of allowed me to bring Quincy in. Oh, uh, really? And he's my whole heart. So, um, so yeah. So you you learn as you go. So you know, I I. I'll have to cap it off at some point. Like yeah. truly, there is a capacity, and I'm pretty well there. Um, I won't turn down emergency, uh, but I just have to be a little pickier about um, taking in situations that I feel that they could probably just deal with and right. I can assist them by either putting them in contact with someone or networking, that sort of thing. So. Yeah, because even if you did a foster situation, it might end up being permanent. So then you're like, well, I yep. only had room for 24 hours and yep. four years later. <laughs> and I can tell you that happens all the time. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's tough. It's really tough to find homes for pigs. So Quincy, for example, um, when I adopted him, when he came here, he was 300 pounds. So he was an OSPCA seizure from a property and uh, he wasn't being cared for. So him and a bunch of animals were re removed from a property. 
and his tiny little body had 300 pounds. So if you're looking into getting a pig, for the, whether it's just like as a family pet and that's what you want to do, um, or maybe you have a farm and you just, you're getting animals, um, a six year old, 300 pound uh, black pig is going to be a tough one to home. Mm -hmm. um, and that's for a variety of reasons. One, you know he needs to lose weight, so you know that there's work already to be put in. B, um, he's a black pig. And everyone wants the pink, cute little one. Everyone <laughs> wants the small, cute pink pig or the ones with the spots or. Wow. So, you know, a pig like Quincy, this is where he's going to wind up. He's going to wind up in sanctuary, so. So you basically saved him pretty much because otherwise, like what would have happened from like, they probably just would have sold him right. to a farmer, right? Right. I guess, so, or well, I guess he's not. So he was at a, he was from a humane society, okay. but humane societies are not prepared um, for pigs. They don't know what to do with pigs. So even they could place a pig in a bad situation. Mm. Um, it's not like dogs. Um, and that's unfortunate, but it is the reality. Like the standard um, of what they look for yes. in order to place a home yes. for a dog. Yes, because right. it's mostly just, we need, we need, and I'm not, I'm not like spitting on, on humane societies. They, they do only what they can do. Um, so, so yeah, so the unfortunate part about pigs is that a lot of times when it comes to homing them, it is a big question mark because like, if I didn't take Quincy, where would he have gone? If I didn't take Rosie, she'd be dead. So, Aww. um, she was, uh, the family who had her wanted her euthanized. And that's how I found her was because they contacted my vet. So, hmm. you know, it is a, it is a big dangling question mark. If they weren't here, where would they be? And of right. course we know for sure where these guys would be. They'd only have a couple months left of life. So. Wow. Well, what you're doing is so amazing. Just like you said, the education, but also yeah. like first most is like their yep. lives, right? Yep. Number one. Yep. But then how many ripple effects have you like, had people through these yes. tours and like people yes. seeing you on a hiking trail. What do you mean yes. you have a pet pig? Right. Where did that come from? Exactly. And then the story opens. Right. right. So you don't know how many seeds you're planting. And um, that's really beautiful. And I love it when people reach out to me. Not everybody does. Uh, I have gotten messages. Oh, <laughs> I have gotten messages where, you know, they reach out and they say, listen, like this really made me um, take a second look at what I'm eating. and and that's so beautiful and I don't hear it all the time but I but I imagine it's happening more than I think it is yes because you're probably like you said you planted a seed so you might yep. not have been the only seed but yep. your seed was like the yep. last drop in the bucket yep. that tipped them over yep. right exactly so that's a great yep. way to think about yep. it and this is and this is how I do my advocating um, yeah. for for veganism and um, for animals wow so this is the way that's fit best with me so partially because they're so intelligent and they they are so emotionally intelligent i know what they're feeling they know what i'm feeling it really takes it to a really humanizing level like i i think people prefer to think that they don't because it's easier for them um but if if they knew i i think it would i i think it would hurt them well, this helps because then, like you said, you know, their tail is wagging and they're happy, right? So, like, yep. right there is, like, when yep. you tell them, like, they're smarter than a dog. Exactly. Exactly. Actually, they, um, they actually do rate them um, as, like, the same intelligence level as a three-year-old. So, wow. um, so, that's pretty smart. This yeah. guy, specifically Bullet, um, I had him alone in my house for a long period of time, so... Um, about eight months he was by himself so I really got to focus on training him so he's the one that can like do all the tricks and, and that sort of thing but aside from being able to teach them tricks um, concepts um, he'll watch me open a door and then he'll open it um, okay. obviously not like yeah. a knob door but um, he can open our sliding door he opened our fridge he helped himself what to food. the fridge um, oh yeah 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 um cabinets so if you came into my house you would have thought i had a young child um just because it's all baby proof yep yep and actually the funny thing is is that we called it bulletproofed oh nice oh that's great <laughs> um that's so cool. but yeah so he taught me um the hard way um about what it's like having a pig living in your home and um I think I think you can do it if you want. You can totally have pigs living in your house if you're giving them everything that they need. But they truly thrive out here. This is where you see them right. for for who they are. Um, you know, in the in the wallow, they dug themselves a wallow. Um, so they tend to destroy. 
property wherever they are so if you do have a small yard and um, they are going to make it theirs so and it's important that they have those things they need the wallow um, so like if you can't provide that um, they're probably not a great um, idea for you to have um, but yeah so they're just they're out here living their best life you know like they're gonna root around and they're gonna create holes and I don't care they yeah because that's where it. you got the property and yep. you had these already in your mind and yep. you already had some anyway Absolutely. yep um, but they love it like people think of pigs um, as being on a farm but when they're out like scratching on the trees and roaming through like that they're totally forest animals I think like deep down um, they love it out there so wow yeah and so do you have to cut your grass or do they eat the grass too no. yeah <laughs> that's um, what I kind of thought <laughs> we mow the front because they don't we don't typically let them spend a lot of time at the front just because it's so close to the road right um but all this uh, we typically don't have to do um down here is a bit long now so we will but um but yeah for the most part they they keep it all trim oh wow so and no dandelions to be seen they clean those up there are things that are toxic to them and um what's really interesting is that they tend to know in a way and they avoid it so um wild rhubarb kind of grows around here um and uh, the leaves of the rhubarb um are toxic to them and we had some right here and um they totally they they'll eat every other leaf but they were not eating the rhubarb interesting leaves. so i find that to be really interesting um but things like poison ivy that you would think would bother them absolutely does not bother them so um they can they can eat it and just it it won't affect them um on the other hand i'm pretty sure they are what gives me poison ivy because they'll walk around and then i pet them oh no so i think they're the 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 reason that i get poison ivy actually um and then yeah in terms of like them just being picky um this guy like won't eat peppers or won't eat um broccoli unless it's steamed um and then they'll choose so like like you see in the tour groups people will throw down carrots and apples they love carrots and they love apples but they will eat those apples before they'll eat the carrots oh, so there's a hierarchy just like us right yep. we have our chocolate Absolutely. over something else Absolutely. yeah so yeah so in fact um they won't eat just anything and i don't give them just anything uh things with mold i will not give them right um but yeah i mean i think their guts allow them to process things easier than than we can right. um but i still i don't i don't you know give them moldy stuff but definitely stuff that i'm uncomfortable eating i will allow them to eat but if it's mold or spoiled um, i won't so i guess do they eat mostly plants is it like are they like a vegan type animal yeah thing? so oh, okay. pigs are omnivores okay. um so people will give them meat um and i don't eat meat so i'm not gonna buy them meat right um the thing that makes me uh, keep them just totally a veggie based is the fact that um yes they're omnivores but they're they're prey animals so if they were out in the wild and they found something dead they would eat it they right. would because they're a pig they'll, yeah. they'll eat it <laughs> will they stalk something and hunt it down and eat it just to eat and meat they absolutely will not they don't have those skills no. they're they're potatoes they don't have those skills so <laughs> they to, do look like potatoes <laughs> right yeah that's why i call them potatoes so to me why why would I give them something that I don't think in the wild they would naturally come across again right. if it's dead or if like if it's enabled maybe but they're not gonna stalk something down and eat it and obviously they're thriving anyways with everything that they're yeah, eating so absolutely. there's no right? point it's not we like they're lacking like a cat or totally. something yeah yep, yep. and you know we it. can thrive we're omnivores we thrive that way so can they yeah yeah and, and I and I see it done the tour groups with other people but if i plop down they just like create a circle around me really? and they don't even like they want their their bellies pat but if i can't get to all of them they literally just just lie there like they just want to be near me <laughs> um and it's 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 beautiful and actually my pigs are the reason that they are the reason why i can do tours because they're all so lovely um and it's truly them that that really makes that experience um because if they were wild 
I wouldn't right. be able to do it. So. Okay, so let us know how they can uh, book these tours and what other any other events, how they can reach you and things like that. Perfect. So uh, I use Airbnb to book tours um, and you can find the Airbnb page simply by going right to Airbnb or on my website, uh, www.theperlyacre.com. Um, just in one of the pages, I have the Airbnb booking tool embedded right into the, to the website. So um, they both go to the same place. Uh, so there's no problem whether whichever way you book it. Um, you can also contact me in, on the contact page through the website, or you can send me an email, thepearlyacregmail.com. Um, and I'm very active on Instagram and all that also filters onto Facebook as well. So you can find us on all the social media you want. Also TikTok. Oh, <laughs> awesome. On TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> so YouTube at all or no? Um, no, not YouTube. No. Okay. So now you'll be on YouTube. Now, be on YouTube. now I will be on YouTube. Well, that way you're covering all your bases. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, Sarah, for giving us this tour. This was so interesting. I learned so much about these pigs, and of course, they're adorable. So if you guys want to go check out her pages, likes, you know, book an Airbnb experience, definitely get on it. Yeah. And thanks so much for having me. I, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you.